So this is a continuation video of uh, the previous one and as you can see as the LED was exposed about to be opened a gush of venous blood is seen coming from the right ventricular side and uh, instantly it is evident that it is RV perforation. So the first thing is to remove the mechanical stabilizer or the pods because if the heart beats against that pod the perforation will worsen number one. Second is to remove the pack that is under the right ventricle which will lift the heart. So that has to be removed number two. And the third one is just uh, put your finger to stop the bleeding and take um, a bite of 5-O proline or a 4-O proline parallel to the LED so that you do not occlude the LED. And um, what this does is just brings the ventricular wall closer to the LED and uh, stops the bleeding. So as you can see here through the small hole there is uh, some amount of bleed but this will stop with this parallel bite. So you need not tie this knot, you can just approximate the suture, put it on a bulldog and uh, let it hang by its own weight. And by doing so the bleeding will be controlled and you will have enough time to establish cardiopulmonary bypass, empty the heart, arrest the heart and manage this bleeding with the heart in an arrested placid state. To establish cardiopulmonary bypass, you should have uh, some amount of iota to put in your aortic cannula and a place to put in your cardioplegia cannula. And when you have aortic and cardioplegia cannula, you need a place to cross clamp the iota. So you need all aspects of the myocardium to be perfused with cardioplegia. And because of the poor planning, as you can see here, the top graft or the number one graft is the vein graft that is going to the obtuse marginal of the LCX territory. The second graft is an SVG that goes to a very large diagonal. And the third graft is the graft that is going to distal RCA or PDA. There is some amount of iota at the top end. The black color is the pericardial reflection on the ascending iota. So we have some room to cannulate the iota at the top. And uh, just above the aortic well, we have the place to place our cardioplegia purse string and to cross clamp the iota between the first and the second graphs that is the graph to the obtuse marginal and the diagonal. Ideally speaking if you have to do this case on beating heart or pump assisted heart without cardioplegic arrest then you can cannulate the iota at any any place. But since the situation demands that we arrest the heart and induce a diastolic arrest we have to go at the top end of the ascending iota. So accordingly, I am taking a purse string at the top end of the iota and you can see the graph to the OM1 uh, sitting quite nicely. So since we have time and the hemodynamics are stable, there is no embolism from the mist blower. The hemodynamics are, are stable, so a purse string is taken at the top end of the iota. There is no bleeding from the perforation site. Then take a generous purse string on the right atrium, as you can see here. So take a generous pursing on the right atrium. Take a large oval pursing on the right atrium so that you can open the RA in the center of this pursing and smoothly put on the atriocaval venous cannula or the two stage venous cannula. So the hemodynamics are again stable as I said and uh, we have planned a pursing at the top end of the iota. Cardioplegia will be at the aortic root. So the question here is where to cross clamp the iota. So the only place to cross clamp the iota is between graft 1 and 2. So in which case graft 1 will be perfusing the heart and rewarming the heart quite quickly. So it is a situation akin to the BT shunt in which case we'll establish bypass and put a bulldog on the BT shunt. If you cross clamp the iota between graft 1 and 2 Graft 1 will perfuse the heart and rewarm the heart. So, after administration of cardioplegia, one has to put a bulldog to graft 1 so that rewarming of the heart does not happen and you have a neat and placid heart which will give enough time between cardioplegic doses. So, this is in brief the planning of cardiopulmonary bypass in this scenario wherein we have not planned placing the proximals on the ascending iota properly. 
since this time I'm taking a second purse string on the ascending iota so safety is a must so if you don't have time then a single purse string would suffice but since this time and the hemodynamics are quite stable as usual we decided to take another purse string one can stop at this stage and grab the LED proximally or distally but since we had only one segment of LED I had to go on bypass de-airing is very important so de-air the aortic line properly cannulate the iota in a smooth way so the ascending iota is cannulated and connected to a de arterial line so this is quite important so open the right atrium in the center of or in the middle of your pursing this is a very nice way or a smooth way of uh, cannulating the right atrium and the IVC sometimes you will have uh, muscle fibers in between so you can cut it with the scissor and gently pass the atrial cable cannula so by doing so we have established cardiopulmonary bypass in a safe way with the stable hemodynamics since the right side graft or the PDA graft in place so we should be careful that we do not disturb the distal and as we go on bypass and the heart is empty you can see the place where I took a parallel stitch across LED is uh, quite neat so at the root of the ascending iota I am taking a stitch to administer cardioplegia so this is the place where the cardioplegia needle is going in now so anti-grade cardioplegia is planned and we connect it to a D8 line of cardioplegia so as I said before so we will be putting the or placing the aortic cross clamp between the grafts to the obtuse marginal and the grafts to the diagonal because there is no, no place at the top end of the iota again I will emphasize that this is bad planning we didn't anticipate this complication cross clamp the ascending iota fully lower the pressure fully clamp the ascending iota admit the cardioplegia and uh, what is happening is your clamp is between diagonal and RCA but the OM graft is perfusing so I put a bulldog there now as the heart is arresting we decided to vent the left ventricle as well so that the LV is not distended by the return first thing is taken along the right superior pulmonary vein and I will put in a vent and I will make sure that the vent is in the left ventricular because uh, we have T guidance so as the vent is in the left ventricle the LV vent is turned on and now we are ready to handle the tear in the RV in a heart which is flaccid which is arrested as you can see and then I will remove the suture so you can see the tear in the right ventricle very clearly so we'll continue the repair in the next part so that is the tear in the right ventricle which is very clearly seen and the LED is very next to the tear in the right ventricle and in the next video we'll discuss about managing this RV tear thanks for watching